believe that we need to demonstrate exactly what we talk about. So we're going to stop every now and again and give you time to reflect and make some connections. So let's look at the six insights about the brain. The brain is actually a connection machine. Now it's made up of billions of neurons and they're, they're kind of put together like maps in your brain and there's just so many of them. It's only a very, very tiny part of our body. It's only about one and a half kilos in weight but our brain is just the centre of all the things that run the rest of our body. So it's a connection machine and it seeks to understand new information by comparing it to the things that you already know. So what you're doing when you're in getting new information, and you'll be doing this tonight, is thinking, oh yeah, that makes sense because that's about such and such, or that doesn't make sense at all. You know, there's no connection for you. And that's what we call a bit of a mental impasse. So sometimes you need to sit with those. The annoying thing about those impasses is the brain won't let it go. Has anyone experienced that? When something just doesn't quite, and you go, oh, I wish I could just find the answer for that sort of thing. So sometimes you just need to let it go and allow your brain to come up with some sort of a solution for you. I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. Stem and down into your spinal column and into your body. So what are the implications of that? The implications of that, that chemical by the way is called cortisol. Cortisol is the stress chemical. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you in a moment, actually I might do it now while we're talking about stress. There is an optimal level of stress. Stress to a point is actually really good for you. So you've got stress here, or what the brain calls arousal, which gets your attention. And then you have performance here. So there is what's called the performance curve, and it looks like this. So what happens is, when there's low stress, performance isn't very high. Okay, it's kind of boring. You don't have that motivation to kind of stretch you and, and push you to learn differently, to do differently. But there is an optimal level of, of stress that's required to get optimal performance. <coughs> it's called eustress. I think it's euphoric. I made that up. But it makes sense to me to remember that. There's an optimal level of stress or a sweet spot. They call it the Goldilocks spot, where it's not too hot, not too cold, not too much, not too low, right? It's just right. And that's where you're going to get the best performance out of me. Once you get to a tipping point, I'm likely to go limbic, right? Where now I don't perceive that I'm in control. I don't perceive I can handle the level of stress that I'm having to deal with. What happens here is I go into distress. And so my performance starts to drop off. So the thing to get from here is a moderate level of stress is actually vital to get optimal performance. But we've all got different sweet spots for stress. That was really good. And it's great to hear that you're making some good connections. But we couldn't hear a lot of it. We could just hear the energy and the voices. So we'd like to hear from you. What are the connections that you're making? Yes. My team at work um, does change management, that's our work. <coughs> so we do systems change, business change, process change, pro pro project change. Mm. Quite experienced in dealing with change, yet we're going through a restructure. And so I was listening to you explaining the SCARF model. Mm. And by the time we got to the third one, the A, like I'd physically experienced the same amount of stress. <laughs> that in my stomach of that exactly mm -hmm. and, and you highlighted it mm -hmm. knowing it doesn't stop your brain from doing it yep. and I was just saying I've had a person with nervous breakdown I've got people away on you know like extended sick leave mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff that's happening and this is people who normally are quite capable in dealing with change but because it's them yes I'm finding that they're not able to do the thinking that they would normally do in mm -hmm. terms of, okay, well, how do we get through this? We know this, you know, like, this is, mm -hmm. this is not rocket science. We've done this a zillion times. Now it's us, but we can do this. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose, so for me, the key insight is, well, okay, I get all of that, like it's this despair cycle, but what do we do to turn it around? How do I stop it? It's short of putting them all on, you know, um, serotonin blockers and all kinds of funny stuff. <laughs> I just want to get that cycle turned around now. Yeah. 
Um, but it's real. It is so mm. real. It is. And even people who are the ones delivering change, when they're going through it, they mm -hmm. will go through this sort of thing. So, I mean, that's probably a, a whole other question, but maybe we can just run through a couple of the techniques. What do you think? Um, when people are in this limbic mode, so the emotions are going off crazy, one thing you will, there's a three-step process you can do, get them to label what's going on in their brain. You know, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, I'm scared I'm going to lose my job, um, I'm over change, you know, we've had change after change, we never get to finish anything, all of those sorts of things. Get them to label, usually just a couple of words, that can really help. Just let me add to that, is that oftentimes people think if I talk about it, or if I put it into words, it's going to make it worse. But the research that's been done on this actually says that when you label what you're feeling, right, it actually creates certainty for the brain. So something in the brain goes, oh, thank goodness you know I'm here. <laughs> right? Because what we try to do is we depress or suppress, and that makes us depressed. Oh. Right? So labeling is the first step. What do you feel? Really important distinction, not I am, I feel. Because when I say I am...